Alright guys, in this video hopefully I uh, can show you how to diagnose or maybe if you're having problems with your outboard, this video can help you. I haven't seen any with this kind of power pack or CDI4. Uh, I haven't seen a video on YouTube on this exactly, uh, on this model, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this video, hopefully it helps you. So, I'm going to start off with uh, what you're going to be needing and yes, you are going to be needing one of these. If you intend to work on it yourself, don't just use your multimeter, you're going to need these leads. You can find them on Amazon. This is a DVA adapter, direct voltage adapter. It'll read what the, what the multimeter can, so you can get the, the readings that are on your specific chart for your outboard. This is a 1992 Johnson V4. Um, the problem for this motor is I'm only getting spark on one cylinder, on cylinder two. Very weak spark on cylinder, on three. Very weak spark on cylinder three. We're gonna go ahead and diagnose this thing. This is an absolute must. If you don't have one, just grab it. It's about $30, you, you're gonna have to bite the bullet and grab this guy, trust me. There's no way around it. And this guy too, a lot of people make their own, but, but this guy right here, you're gonna need it. A remote start switch. So let's go ahead and hook this one up and the DVA adapter, I'm gonna show you how. Let's get All right, this is the this is just a what it was like 20 bucks on Walmart or 15, I'm not too sure, standard uh, Everstart a 300 volt meter. Take the original leads out. The DVA adapter, is, it literally just plugs in to the red and black. And for the reading on this guy, you're gonna have to put it to the this guy right here. Um, depending on what um, decibels you're reading, you're gonna have to put it to, because uh, if, if you're trying to read about 0 0.05 volts or whatever, and you have it over here, it's not gonna work. So drop it down, you can see the decibel moving. Okay, that's simple. It's very simple. Let's go ahead and hook this guy up. Right here is the power uh, coming in from the, this is the lead coming in from the battery, the power battery. Hook one lead up to it like that. Make sure it's there. Make sure the boot is all the way in. And you hook the other lead to the yellow and red wire right here. Uh, ah, this one right here. Not this one, this one. Clamp it, make sure the boot is all the way in. Remember, on the starter solenoid, you hook it up to the power lead from the battery to the starter solenoid. This jumps the starter. Don't hook it up over here, I don't know why, but just do it like that. All right, a little close up because I was in the way. Power terminal, hooked up, starter solenoid. Now we can start diagnosing it. Uh, as you can see, the, the switch is turned on. It's hooked up, all you have to do is press the switch and it'll activate the flywheel. Pretty simple. All right guys, let me give you some tips really quick before we start the diagnosing processes. Diagnosing process, first of all, you don't want your spark plugs in. I always like to put in some WD-40, just squirt, just a little squirt in there, doesn't matter. Give it some lubricant. lubricant. I've done that for many years. Trust me, on my other outboard, it won't hurt it. Take all of them out. And another corresponding issue, if you have no spark whatsoever, one proce procedure is take this um, red bulb out and take it out. Now, if you disconnect this red, big red plug or whatever, I'm pretty sure you, some of you guys know out there. And now you, you crank it and you have spark. The, the underlying issue is gonna be up there, probably on the switch control switch or whatever, your kill switch wiring it's going to be up there. You have to chase it down basically. Okay, N now if you disconnect and don't have spark like I do back here, I only have spark on this guy. Um, now we're gonna diagnose it. Okay, so we got our, our connectors on, everything's on right now. The way it's supposed to be, everything is hooked up. Everything's hooked up. The power pack, this is the power pack right here. Okay, it's a CDI, the numbers are, okay, this is an OEM. This is a 584040. There's another one that it's OEM. It's a 584041. It's all the same. All these other all these outboards. So all we're gonna do right now is test how much voltage these um, coils are producing. So like I said, I have spark on cylinder two and zero spark on all these engines. So let's test cylinder two. This is the first thing I did. I just put a spark plug tester right here to see if it has spark. So I'm gonna put it right here. Hopefully you can see if it has spark. You can see there was some spark in there. So that's good. Okay, so we know cylinder one has, cylinder two 
has spark. Now we're gonna, just going to take it off, connect it to cylinder. Just a simple spark plug tester. Zero spark. We get no spark. Now we're going to check how much voltage is coming out of cylinder 2 with the DVA adapter. We're just going to go ahead and plug this one to the boot and this one to ground. Any ground. This one's already connected to ground over here. So I'm just gonna connect it to ground. I like to have all these uh, little alligator clips on the side just to, just in case I need them. I can just use them like that and then you can connect them anywhere you want. This one's going inside cylinder two. We're gonna see how much um, power we're getting. Everything's hooked up, hopefully you can see. It goes all the way to 170 I believe as you keep cranking, okay? 170 volts, that passes the test. Now we're gonna switch this one, which is the, the, the positive tester. I don't know how you say it. We're gonna switch it to, bank, to cylinder number three. So we're gonna check how much voltage we're getting out from cylinder one, two, three. This is the third cylinder. I marked them wrong. Okay, everything's connected. Let's go ahead and spin the engine. see zero voltage and the uh, multimeter is set to 300 volts to register if you're not seeing anything and, and you need a lower voltage just switch it <laughs> see it's registering 0. 0.6 very uh, very weak spark right there super weak as we move it lower <laughs> it's only generating about 1.6 volts which is not good it failed the test. It has very weak spark. Do that for all the cylinders. This one passed the test on voltage. The voltage on this guy was really good. It was above 150, which is what is recommended for it to be working. All you do is you probe this end or you probe this end. Now your next procedure, if they failed the test, is to check if the coil is any good. Um, stick around to the to the end of the video. I got a really good trick on how to check if these are arcing on your block or whatever. Anyways, so I ended up checking these. These were good. I switched out all of them and put them to cylinder one, which um, gave me the same readings, so I knew it, that it was good. And also check the ohms test, but never rely too much on the ohms test. If it has a DVA reading, you need that DVA reading. If you find a coil that is bad and replace it, now you have spark wheels. It, you found your problem, right? Case closed, but no. Uh, the fact is, all these are good. It has very weak spark. So next step is we are going to disconnect the kill switch and the these two wires in here that are the... These two wires are the yellow and yellow and silver are the rectifier. These go from the these come from the stator to the rectifier. This is a water cooled rectifier. We're gonna eliminate this, get it out the way. It should have spark now that we disconnect these. See, make sure you insulate these or whatever. And we're gonna rotate the engine and see if we have spark now. We're gonna run it disconnected with the rectifier and the kill switch, which is giving me spark on cylinder one. Let's check cylinder two. And no spark okay uh, th it gave me this reading on all the other cylinders again I still have the same problem which means it's not the rectifier or the kill switch it should have given me power if it gives you spark back now you can replace the rectifier or your your kill switch grounds clean them up make sure there's no voltage going to your ground anyways uh, we know that's not the problem next step next step is we're gonna go up um, you can go from the stator down but if you don't need to I talked to a CDI guy, he said it's better troubleshooting from the bottom up. Uh, less disconnect, you can disconnect less less stuff if you need to, but um, let's, let's keep going, okay? Hopefully you're, you're still here, <laughs> hopefully you, you, you get what I'm saying. Okay, so we know it's not the coil, we know it's not, it has really bad spark or it has really low spark. It's not the coil, it's coming from up there because, because it's not the kill switch and it's not the rectifier in there. This converts uh, AC, AC current to DC current, which charges your battery, which, charge, which hooks up to your tack meter. Okay, as you can see, left to right, red, purple, I believe that goes all the way up to the instrument cluster, the orange, 
uh, orange stripe. Those two are the, right here, these two. This one is a power stator. We're gonna check these right now. This one goes to your tech. This is just the rectifier that powers these over here. Disconnect these. And that's what the manual says. Disconnect these and we're gonna proceed on chasing the our problem, okay? We're gonna get the, the specs for the orange wires coming from the stator. As you can see, these two wires coming from the stator that hook up to this rail, other two wires are hooked up. These other two wires, these two other orange wires are hooked up to the power pack. Okay, so we're gonna test the, this is the power uh, coming from the stator. We're gonna check if the stator is good. These are the brown and brown and yellow wires. We're gonna check these two. This is how we check them. Okay, you can check, you can check them connected and if they give you good values, you leave them, you chase the problem back to the power pack. Let's, let's go ahead and do it. This is why you need this guy. I have my alligator clips connected to the orange and orange and black wire that goes to the stator. Everything's connected, everything's hooked up. We're gonna see the specs on that, the DVA specs. Okay, I have it set it to 300. We're gonna see how much we're gonna, how much we're getting. As you saw on the uh, on the readings, it read about 22 um, 22 volts that is hooked up. So these orange wires are in pretty good shape coming in. That's what the spec is. So those are good. I called the guy, explained everything. Those are good. Now we're gonna probe the black and yellow wire. Brown and brown and yellow wire here through the back. I don't want to mess with it because I've been messing with it all day today. I even took out the boot. I took them all out. You can take them out and, and read them or whatever you want. And it, they slide back in the boot. You just got to be very careful because if you mess them up, uh, you're going to have a pain in the butt to put them back in. So we're gonna, I'm going to probe these and give the engine a spin to see what the DVA reading is all right guys let me tell you again wd-40 is going to be your best friend right here you don't want to mess them up probe them they're connected the stator is connected to the power pack we're going to check the dva readings on this we're going to crank the engine cranking make sure nothing gets in the way 190 we got 190 um I already did this before 150 volts to 400 volts we got 190 I was reaching um, 300 earlier battery is a little dead right now okay so that one passed the test stator is in good condition orange leads and brown leads fall within spec okay now we're gonna check the output on the output DVA on the trigger timer base right here these two leads are your trigger timer base leads you can test them individually. You can pop them out. On this one right here, uh, I don't want to mess with it too much because I did poke this one out and I had to re-clamp it. And these uh, striped wires, they go to your they go to your um, cylinder number. These right here, not the other side. I don't know what the hell this side is for, but the guy told me um, these are your the ones that go to your um, coils. These you want to check these and these. You can check them connected and unconnected. I'm gonna show you how to check them connected so we can get the value, the DVA value on these. And if it falls within spec while connected, you don't have to unconnect them and retest them. You can do that, but if they fall into spec, then your power pack is bad. Because the stator is good, trigger timer is good. The only thing that is probably messed up or messing everything up is the power pack. Okay, hold on, I mean, let me, uh, cause I wanna put this um, where you can get Good value from this video. Okay, we're gonna unclip this and just test it by itself, the brown wires. So let's go ahead and do that. The connect, the connected DVA value was 190. Let's unhook this and test it by itself. All right guys, uh, I slipped the terminals out of the boot. As you can see right there, just be careful. Don't mess them up. I got them hooked up to the DVA reading. Now let's check what the brown and brown yellow wire are gonna give us while it's disconnected, okay. as you can see it went past 300 so we got 300 coming in while it's connected it's giving us about 190 close to 200 that is perfectly fine I called the CDI guy I spoke to them they said it's completely 
good. The stator is good. You're getting enough power to the um, power pack. Once you do these tests, the stator is in good condition. All right, guys, like I was saying, if you take these out of the rail, test them uh, disconnected, and you get a very high reading, that's actually good. If you get a very, very poor reading, your stator is bad. I mentioned that to the guy. He said, I'm, I'm getting plenty enough power to the power pack. And when I connected them, I get 22 volts. He said, you're well within spec. That's what you should be getting. So he told me your stator's good. Trigger timer base. Uh, it's more than likely your um, power pack. But see how much char uh, power we're receiving from the stator. All right. It's going to be way more than when it was connected. All right. Over here, it's not going to tell you. I haven't found a sheet that says what it should put out by itself. I don't know why that, if you know why it doesn't come with the specs that I just did right now, um, disconnect it from the power pack. Um, but the specs that you should be looking for are when connected, which fall in line that they're good. But I told the the CDI guy what this power outage was what what um dva readings i was getting and he said you're getting uh enough more than enough power to your power pack so he said your stator is really good we're gonna probe the we're gonna test the DV, the dva readings on on the uh, trigger timer okay you can do this hooked up or unhooked up it's better for you to do them while they're hooked up to the power pack so what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna probe them from the back and get your reading so on on this one we're always going to be uh, probing the white one the white one is the negative it's the ground so that one stays in and we're gonna we're gonna probe all these one by one and get the reading and see if they fall into spec if they fall into spec that means your your trigger your trigger timer base is good if they don't fall into spec unplug it get the readings over here and if it now falls into spec your part your 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 timer base is good and your power pack is bad but if it if it's good on both sides um your timer base is good that's a good thing something is wrong with your um power pack if it's not getting spark over here on the coils got it hooked up on this side got it uh, white to blue then you're gonna do the same thing, white to pink, green, all around. We're just gonna get, check this one. It got a little worried there. You have to switch these. If not, you're not gonna get a reading. Make sure you have the decimal points in the correct uh, thing. The reading for this is 0 0.6 volts and up. So that's why I wasn't reading, because it was at 300. Make sure you always change that, because you're gonna be like scratching your head and making more problems that aren't even there. Anyway, 0 0.6 volts and up. 2.8, that's really good right there. I already did this test. All, I already probed all these. They fall in the same uh, spec, so the, this side is good. We're gonna do this side now. And this one is a little higher, it's one point five volts and up we're gonna see if we get that all right now we're gonna check the right side of the trigger timer plugged in connect which means connected on your chart we're gonna probe the purple one right here we got the purple going on looks good my camera doesn't show and remember the white it always plugged in that's the ground it, it's gonna tell you white to purple white to whatever you do the same thing to all of these i believe there are four or five here i'm not too sure remember this side is 1.5 volts and up Let's see what we get 4. Point. but anyways all these are in spec uh, i believe i wrote them down already they all passed the test right there so we know our stator is good our trigger timer base is good in good condition all the readings uh, lined up. If this passes, you can also test them unplugged. Unplug this and test them individually through the through the back. So I already tested it, connected and disconnected. Another thing about these orange wires, if you're getting if you're getting 22 volts to the power pack, that is good. Disconnected, these two by themselves would give me 90 volts to 122 volts. Disconnected. And then once once you plug in the power pack, it gave it gave me a reading of 22 volts 
which indicated well the CDI guys said I'm getting enough power to the power pack so that's good your stator is good your trigger timer base is really good you're getting all of the juice now the power now the problem will more than likely be the power pack right now so that's how I diagnosed this engine and uh, that needed a power pack I already have it on Amazon well, all right guys there you have it hopefully you got something from this video if you did like and subscribe or put whatever you have whatever's wrong with your outboard put it down in the comments maybe someone can answer it maybe I can answer it but this is as far as I've gone I'm just waiting on the power pack I'm gonna install it tomorrow see where that takes me hopefully I get spark hopefully I get this guy running yeah if you have any any questions about how I did it or your readings your readings you can get them on the CDI website they have everything there Johnson Mercury Mercury whatever you can call them up I know they have a technical support group it says they charge but they don't charge the guy was very helpful we were talking for about 20 minutes he was very very helpful well I, I, I explained everything I did all my readings he pinpointed me to the pack now he did say something about the coils but I don't have that little resistant um, adapter more than likely it's not that because I tested all the coils I switched them around and they all worked good but another thing is before this video ends um, how you can find a short a for me a wire was this this guy right here was arcing to the block and I couldn't see it whenever I was cranking the engine in daylight I couldn't see the spark traveling until it was really late at night I was troubleshooting this engine and my daughter comes out and she she said what is what was that blue thing on the engine as soon as I as she said that I got it to where something was uh, one of these wires was uh, open or corroded and the spark was traveling to the engine block it was shorting out to the engine block so a uh, really good tip is at night or if you have it in your garage turn off all the lights turn off all the lights or at night um, go ahead and spin your engine and visually inspect it to see um, around all around inspect it Hold on, did that, did that car pass? inspect your engine at night to see if you see any current or any um, spark just um, arcing to the engine or shorting into the engine um, that's how I found out uh, a quick little tip I wanted to share with you all before this video ends anyways uh, thank you for watching the video if you stayed this long uh, go ahead and like and subscribe for future video I'm gonna diagnose another engine uh, soon so go ahead and like and subscribe uh, thanks for watching all right guys this is I insulated this one I, I insulated this one put some insulation and all that stuff because I thought it had a short anyways we're gonna test if this um, kill switch is faulty you're supposed to hook this one up to your multimeter which I did and the other lead to your ground which is here I put the ground here and we're gonna turn this engine over okay we're gonna test it connect uh, disconnected and connected put the original leads back in and put it to volts uh, you need to spin this about five times and you're not supposed to get more than 0.5 of a volt the guy said you're gonna have some volts um, but if you have more than 0.6 you have a short in your electrical ignition system so it's right here zero that's how it's supposed to be we're gonna test it disconnected got it hooked up to the power pack kill switch everything's hooked up probed in oh, I that checks out kill switch kill circuit is really good it's not shortening out or anything like that if it was shortening shortening out it would have gave me some a little bit of voltage here which was actually killing your engine and not making it run so that's how you check the kill switch on an outboard, I would say.